you need a Gmail account or a Google Plus account to access Blogger. Now I'm on the Blogger, I'm on Google now and I'm signed in uh, and I can see myself over here and if I click here you can see it offers you the various variety of tools that you get with your Gmail account um, I know that you can come in, you can actually sort of sign up and get your Gmail account other ways but all of these are now connected, YouTube, um, Google Plus etc. Um, and if you click here on more you should find that one of the buttons says blogger and that's exactly where you want to go and when you click into blogger and you come into your blogger site you're not going to have what I'm going to have here at the top of the screen because obviously I've got various blogs that I've created in the past so you should really see this um, completely empty but what you should see is the button new blog and that is important now you may sometimes have other windows open as well and again you might this will be to do with other blogs that you follow etc and I'll come back and talk a little bit about that but hopefully you should see a button there called new blog at the top of your page and that's where we're going to start and we're going to click on that button in the next video and start straight away with our first video and our first blog so let's click on new blog and basically all you have to do is give your blog a title so I'm going to call mine teacher training videos blog and the address is going to be the actual site address the URL and you don't want to use gaps in that so I'm just going to call that teacher training videos blog and it's telling me that's okay that that way that address is okay it might be a bit of a long name for a blog but for, for the one for today that will do first fine now choose a template I'm gonna go for simple well we can always update the template so it really isn't something you should worry about at the moment just choose the simple template and click on create blog and that is it your blog is now ready that simple to create a new blog and um, all we need to do now is to start add content to that particular blog and there it is all ready so now the blog is ready and um, if we roll over here it says create new post so I always like this um, layout because if you want to create a new post for any of your blogs you can just simply click here and immediately will go to that blog of course you will only have one blog at the moment you can create as many blogs as you want let's add our first post by simply clicking on here and if we click on here it opens up the interface for working with blogger and we can more or less start straight away now you've got two views when you're working with blogger and most of the time you're just going to want to work in compose mode there will be times when you want to go into HTML if you're for example going to embed something and we'll come to that but for now all you need to do is to click on compose mode now one important thing is to always give your blog post a title and it's really worth thinking about these titles because titles are part of the metadata and meta information about each particular blog that you write and so try to give your title something relevant to whatever your particular topic is because it will help for your blogs to be indexed on Google so I'm gonna do a blog post which is going to be using ICT to develop students fluency in speaking so a nice long clear title it clearly explaining what this particular blog post is about it's a good idea to really think carefully about the layout of your blog post and try to make them all consistent so let's say I'm going to put a title which is going to be why ICT can help develop speaking so this isn't the title of my post but it's like the first subtitle and I'm going to then select that and choose from here I've got either heading subheading minor heading and that's a really nice way of working and this of course is going to be the heading and now I'm going to start writing underneath that and if I click here it should just go back again to normal and I can start to write my post now it may be that your post is already written and you're going to just paste it in or it may be that you're going to start writing here so I'm just going to quickly just sort of put a bit of text across the screen so one way would be to just to start adding your text onto the screen and writing your article 
for example, this particular article is going to be about developing students' fluency, and I can just begin to write there. Now, when I then want to add an, a subtitle, would come down again, and then, for example, this is a sub title so it's not one of the main titles it's a subtitle of and again select it on its own line click on the drop down and then put that as a subheading and then of course you would then carry on writing notice what happens as soon as you click back down another line it comes to normal and off you go and then you can start to be adding your next line of or next section of text etc so very very easy for you to almost start immediately uh, to add text to your screen. Again, move down. Let's say we're going to have another subtitle. This is a second subtitle. Notice that I write it in first and then I select and choose um, the formatting that I want to use. And again, well, as soon as I click down, it will jump back to normal and allow me again to be writing. It's just something I've learned over time that's really good to think about the organization of your post and the titling that you're going to use. And then to be really consistent with that titling in 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 uh, next uh, in in all your blog posts right a lot more to do with this particular post before it's ready for publishing but let's uh, move on and just look at another option which is to paste in the text from somewhere else okay a couple of tips about cut and paste and you'll often say see this when you um uh, work with different blogging tools, Blogger allows this, and that is that you paste in and take all the formatting out. Now I'm just going to quickly go to an article that I've got here, and I'm, this is an article that I've written, and I'm going to copy that. So I'm just going to copy here, and then I'm going to come back to my blog, and let's just see what happens if I paste that in. And if I paste that in, as you can see, it's kind of formatted itself, and it's sort of gone with uh, the, a large formatting size. Now what I'm going to do is just select all that, paste and then I'm going to click on this button here which says remove formatting take that all out and therefore it now is uh, kind of coming in, in it starts to look a little bit similar to the rest of this blog and of course what I would now do is select that title and then click again on subheading and suddenly we've now copied and pasted in some extra content and tidied it up made it look like the rest of the uh, the um, of the blog so that's a very useful button that is that is when you paste in from word and you want to make sure that you haven't got any formatting because it can really mess up um, your um, blog post so let's imagine that this is our first blog post and we're happy with it is that everything and the answer is no absolutely vital and you'll see why a bit later is to make sure that you label every blog post that you create and that is going to help people to be able to find your blog posts find related blog posts and also going to allow them to be able to sh search for your blog post not only by the the date stamps but also by the labels that you create so make sure you click on the labels button and add labels now this is the first post so there are no um, uh, labels that are being suggested to me but I'm going to start by just writing speaking and then a comma and then fluency and then another comma and I'm going to write communication so we're going to just to have these three and notice that I am using commas click on the done button and we've now added those three labels to that particular um, blog post and that is really really important now we've got lots of uh, buttons here on the right hand side that we can talk about and we will come back and look at later on uh, when it comes to publishing posts but I do want to look at some of these buttons here at the top the first one is publish and if you click on that button publish button that particular blog post will be published and available to the world if you just want to save it but you don't want to publish it so in other words you're going to come back and do some work on it later then click on the save button and if you want to preview what it's actually going to look like we'll click on this button here which opens another window and will actually give you a preview of how that blog post is actually going to look on the page now you'll notice that it's got something called about me here and this information about me well I'll come back to this because this is really what we call a plug-in or a widget that we've got here and this widget is automatically 
part of the template we can delete it if we don't want to have that so we will come back and deal with widgets notice that when you go and preview that you're actually opening up an additional tab at the top of your page so you can close that and come back so you can either save or you can publish and you can preview I'm gonna publish this button and um, when we come back and do some more blog posts we'll look at some of these other ones I just wanted to show you the simplest way to do your very first blog post and really with what I've showed you you could now click on the publish button which is what we're going to do and our first blog post has been published and we can now see it in the overview of the teacher training videos blog we're looking at the posts and we can see the first post has been added and I can see clearly the three labels that I've used and notice that each of those labels I began with a capital letter to make it all nice and clear and nicely formatted so when you publish a blog post you get taken to this page here I just want to make it dead clear where we are if you click on my blogs it will bring you back to the list of all the blogs that you have created uh, remember we've seen this page before there it is and if we click here on this particular blog the one that we've just been making together and come back to posts it will bring us back to the, the page uh, where our posts are and there it is again so this is a useful page because as you produce more and more blog posts they will all appear here one last thing about navigation before we get on to create another blog post and that is if you click again on my blogs and you were to look at all your blog posts you know that you've got a menu here, a drop-down menu that takes you to all the different important pages and we'll be dealing with a lot of these pages during uh, the, uh, this course. Now, if we also clicked here, for example, on Teach Training Video, so we're going in specifically to that particular blog, then the same list is here on the left-hand side. Oh, sorry about that. I'll just say no the same lift is here is here on the same on the left hand side so just to keep that in mind my blogs and really that list is just this list here and you can access this list from here or you can click on the blog and it will appear on the left hand side so that's just a little bit about navigation two really important things are the posts and this button that always brings you back to your list of blogs that's really really important and this button here is very useful because it gives you all the different possibilities for that particular blog and the same for any of the other blogs that you've produced uh, depending whether or not what depending obviously what rights you've got this one here is a blog that's been shared with me for example anyway let's now move on to adding a second blog post to our uh, our teacher training videos blog so we can always add a new blog post by clicking here or by going to the posts and we'll just do that for now and clicking here and also we'll add a new post now we're going to give this second post a title and um, more about fluency and research into taping students okay and again I'm going to select that and I'm going to add the heading there and then I'm going to start to write my piece and because I do it like this it always goes back to normal which is really useful okay and this time though what we're going to do is we're going to add a picture so we're going to move here and then come down and this time I'm going to add a picture so we're going to click on this button here insert image now we've got lots of different ways that we can insert images let's start with the most obvious one which is going to be choose a file and just grab a file from our own computer so we'll do that and just come down to pictures and just add in an image from my computer I'm click in here on some ones of me giving presentations and let's just put this one in here for example click on that and then obviously wait till it uploads and then click on add selected and that picture will be added to the blog now we're not limited to have the image in the middle if we click here there are a few things that we can do just by clicking on the image uh, first of all we can shift it to the left or shift it to the right we can make it smaller or larger you've got various sizes or you can always set it to the original size uh, you can add caption 
etc uh, etc et so I'm going to shift this image to the left so I do that in, uh, min, min to the left I'm going to make it smaller so I shift on that one there then I'm going to add a caption Russell presenting in Turkey and there we are we've got our first image uploaded um, because of where the image that is and it's going to click here now and uncenter so that the cursor moves back again to the right. So we've now added an image into our second blog post. Now I want to show you a second way of adding an image and for this particular one what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what they call the unique resource locator. Each image that's on the internet has its own unique resource locator and what we can do is and um, we'll just move the cursor down here and then we're going to, oh, let's again for some reason it's shifting to the center point, I'm going to put it to the left I'm going to click on the link button here insert image button, sorry, the insert image button and if I click here, I was on upload, if I click here it shows me all the images in the blog and if I click here it says right in the unique resource locator every single image on the internet has a unique resource locator that is where that image resides and we can actually copy a r unique resource locator the URL from another website from an image on another website paste it in here and it will grab that image and reproduce the image on or in our blog now it's interesting you're not actually downloading the image you're not taking a physical copy, you're actually linking and reproducing the image on your website or on your blog through the code. So for example if I went to Russell Stannard here and using my uh, Google Chrome in this case I right click and click on this one here copy Im image URL. Now each browser works slightly differently C come back again paste in that unique resource locator and click on add selected and it there appears on the screen and I can even click on that and make it small to make sure that we got the same size image um, by doing that as well so there we've seen how we can add an image using the unique resource locator of course it's vital that we add labels to all our posts because that will help uh, not only blogger to find our posts and for users to find our posts within Blogger but also simply because of the way that uh, Blogger is picked up by Google. Click on labels and it will first of all show you any previous labels that you've um, used and you can see that I've got three here and if I wanted to use any of those I'll just click on them and that one will be added and if I still wanted to add any more myself for example in this this particular case let's imagine that we're going to add the one um, uh, taping and, and then I can add that and click on done. Remember when you click on the publish button the actual post is published. If you click on the save button it's just saved for you to come back and add to a later date but it's not published on the internet. I'm going to publish it so I click on that button and of course it brings me back to my posts page I can clearly see my labels and I've now got two posts included. Okay we're really moving now let's add another post and we'll click go straight from here so we're on the posts page that is that we're on the teacher training videos blog and we've got a list of our posts we're going to add a new post this is going to be our third post we'll give this one the title and again we want to try to make sure developing fluency through stories so we're kind of keeping on the same theme of speaking etc etc how storytelling can help now what we want to do in this particular one again we're going to first of all select that text and give it the heading title because we want to keep this all nice and consistent so that all the blog posts look the same and what we're going to do here is first of all add in again a little bit of text and I will come and talk a little bit more about text in a second so just adding a little bit of text onto the screen let's imagine now that we want to add in a video and uh, obviously Google links in really well with YouTube I'm going to click here and I really like the way that this works now I'm going to grab from from YouTube um, and I'm going to click on from YouTube and in fact I can just do a search here so I'm going to put in for example um, Russell Stannard and see if there's any stuff uh, and hopefully there might be something on me talking about uh, simple t technology tools that we can use and there is so I'm going to click on that 
and that then it gives me a little bit of information and I'm going to click on select and that is now going to be embedded into my blog and of course this, we can play it back again come to the labels and I may want to use some of the ones I've already got um, speaking but I'm going to add a new one here as well which is going to be so click on here and I'm going to just write ICT tools and I'm going to write uh, Vokaroo because I know that I'm talking about that particular and so sl now we've done another post and this particular post isn't much of a post at the moment and it's just actually a video that uh, students can access but you're getting the idea of just how easy it is to start to build up your blog and add images etc etc and again I'm just going to publish that when you publish remember you're always taken to the posts page now we haven't really viewed this blog yet and that's what I want to do next is just have a look at the, the blog and um, start to think a little bit about the layout of the blog and how we can kind of make it look a little bit nicer obviously this is just a sort of introductory set of videos so really I'm just very quickly touching over all the basics so that you can get up and working with blogger if ever you want to view your blog just click here and you can then open up the page and actually look and see what the blog looks like and what this particular blog is going to look like is it will always show the latest blog post and if we scroll down we'll also see uh, a previous blog post and if we scroll down even further we'll see a previous blog post so we've got three blog posts up on the screen already and you'll see there's here opportunities to leave comments etc etc and we're going to kind of start to have a look at some of these things you'll notice also that we've got here a kind of archive and this is by default we didn't do anything this seems to just appear we've got this about me information and we've got this other thing here which is a blog archive now by default your blog posts are always always organized by title and also they're date stamped as well and it shows us that there are three blog posts in the month of October and we can click and go to any of those particular blog post by simply clicking on it and it will bring that post up onto the screen and if I did the same here now what about if we wanted to navigate in a different way for example what about all those lovely meta tags that we've added and what about if we don't want this here or what about if we wanted this in a different place how does all this this work how have we chosen this particular formatting and that's what I want to start to look at now and that's one of the things I like about blogger is that you can really play around with the design and we can actually do a lot of things again I'm just going to emphasize the real basics for this particular course but I'm going to start to show you how we can do that now so I'm back on my main blog page here I've got my blog here and I'm going to click on this drop down menu and I'm going to go to something called layout this is really interesting because we can play around quite a lot with the layout of our blog and you'll also notice that there are some things for example the blog is here we've got the header here and you've notice on the right hand side here we've got an about me um, gadget and we've got another one called blog archive now the blog archive I definitely want to keep because that is where my blog posts are displayed in terms of the titles and on a monthly basis but I don't want this one here called about me it's added by default when we use the simple blog theme and some themes have different gadgets or in different places so I can just click on edit and I can get rid of that so I'm gonna remove it I don't want to have that particular gadget on uh, my page but a gadget that I do want is one called labels because we've got the meta tags that we've been adding the labels that we've been adding to each of our blog posts but we've got no way at the moment of allowing the users to click on those labels so that they can access the any related articles so I'm going to click on add a gadget you'll see there's loads of gadgets we can add and we'll come back and have a look at a few of these and blog stats and uh, search box but one that we've got here if I can find it is called let's just have a quick like it's called labels and I'm going to click on that and I can change the title if I want to want to put something else I can organize my labels uh, alphabetically I can organ organize them by frequency and I think that's what they will do um, so the more frequent ones will come higher up we can do a cloud as well so that also will mean that the more frequent the 
um, use of a particular meta tag the more often than the bigger sorry the larger it will be displayed and we can even have a show a number of tags related to or number of times that each tag has been used and I'm going to choose that just to display it. so I'm going to click on save so we've added this new label and we're going to click on save arrangement just to make that sure that that has been saved and I'm now going to click on view blog and hopefully we should see now that we've got labels and there they are and I can click for example on fluency and it will show me all three blog posts that are related to that label or if I click on Vokaroo it will show me just the one blog post that is related to that label or if I click on IC tools it will show me the one blog post related to that label etc. Now obviously it keeps bringing up the same blog post because at the moment we've only got three blog posts but that is absolutely crucial and it's this means now that students can or users can um, navigate my blog through the labels that I'm creating or through the titles of each blog post which are organized by date now let's look at a little bit more then at these gadgets because these can really build up and make our blog look particularly interesting and really give it a nice look and feel. We can add gadgets. Now I'm going to add one more gadget to the side. I'm a real fan of adding my gadgets to the side. You can see that you can add gadgets in different places here and you're just going to have to experiment and, and work with these uh, gadgets and you'll see that some of them we will need to add to the top of the page and I'll come back to that in a minute but I'm going to add another gadget which is going to be in this particular case I'm going to ha have a gadget which gives me the blog stats shows me how many people have visited my website or my blog so I'm going to click on here it's going to offer me various options and I'm going to go for um, this one here the, just a very simple format which is just a number um, uh, this one here's got like a little graphic along with it as well but I'm just going to put a little number there total page views it can be the title I can overwrite that and I'm going to click on save now one of the things that I can do when I click on save and add that to my is that I can now decide well I'm going to have that underneath here I don't want I want my labels first because my labels are to do with actually finding uh, the contents those are really important and I'm going to add one more label which is a search engine always worth having a search engine when you've got a very small blog like this it's very unlikely that really the, the search engine is going to be of particular interest but um, if you want to um, just click here you can add a search box and uh, it will link um, and click on here you've got various settings that you can use I'm just sort of showing you some of the possibilities so you can configure your search box and we've now added a search box uh, which allows a users to actually search the blog and um, again scroll down and click on save to actually add that sorry so now we've got four I'm going to click on save arrangements to make sure that's all been saved and now we should notice if we go to view blog that we've got a search engine and we've got labels we've got an archive and we've even got a total page views and we've had 11 page views so far and that really has been just me keep going back onto the web and looking so you can see we're starting to produce quite an interesting blog it's all already starting to look a little bit more lively and nicely organized one thing is though at the moment all it is is a blog we've got no additional pages and one of the features of blogger is that we can actually have pages where we have static information the blog is the dynamic information that's being continually added to the web to the blog and the, your blog posts are being added to the blog and you can of course search those but you can have additional information which might be saying about me page or a list of publications that you've done obviously it depends if you're a class if you're doing a class blog it might be a list of your students and it might be the curriculum or timetable of your classes it might be a list of files that the students can download there's all sorts of things that we could add into pages and that's what we're going to start to look at now now so far we have been looking at our blog and we've got this lovely blog and it's all sort of growing and coming together and it's working pretty well in fact sorry I'm showing you the older version now we've done a new one now with the search engine and the stats but we haven't got any pages and as I said we can add pages to the blog so let's look at how we do that and there's a couple of things about this so first of all we're going to come back to our blogs 
and we're going to do what I always do which is use this drop down menu here so I'm looking at the teacher training videos blog I'm going to click here and I'm going to come down to pages and we can add as many page. I think there might be a limit actually but we can add create pages for our blog so I'm going to click on new page okay so I'm going to add a new page and this new page I'm going to call it about me because remember I took away the about me um, gadget on the side and rather do uh, a kind of about me page okay now just to save uh, time I'm gonna quickly copy and paste some text from my own blog and just paste that in so here I am on my own blog I'm gonna copy this text here uh, okay and then I'm gonna copy that now one thing to remember is to paste that in using this remove formatting don't forget that because here I'm for example copying something which is in HTML so I'm going to click on that and the first thing I'm going to do is select all of that and choose remove formatting and it kind of comes down to the right size remember to now select that and give it the heading title so this is now the about me and it's probably likely that you would add a picture or some video or something like that and I'm going to publish that so we've now added page and it's got a title and it's got some information we're not going to do anything about this we'll come back and look at this at a later stage anyway but we're going to just publish that and hopefully now we have got an extra page on our blog let's just have a look at our blog and see if that's worked and we'll click on the blog to open the blog up remember we've just produced an extra page and there is nothing there and that's why I was expecting because even though we have produced a new page we haven't actually produced here what we call a kind of menu system where the pages will be viewed and because that is actually a gadget if we want to have our pages for example here or our pages listed here we can have our pages listed in all sorts of places obviously the most obvious place just like in a website is to have them at the top we now need to add the menu gadget or pages gadget to allow us to access those pages and that's what I'm going to do in the next video now I'm going to point something out to you when you're working with blogger um, you can if we just if you notice here you can actually from here edit these gadgets you don't really have to do what I'm doing which is to always go back to this page here let's just um, just publish this a minute and it's telling me there's an error because I haven't got uh, um, uh, any pages added yet uh, pa the, the actual page menu as I've said if I just click back here and come down to the layout what we can do now and we're gonna do this at the top here is that we're gonna add a gadget and the gadget that we're going to add is one that says, let's think it should be here, pages. Display a list of standalone pages on your blog. And I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask me how I want it to look. So I'm going to have the home one and I'm going to have the about me. So home will be my blog and about me is this new one that I've added. Um, I can do a bit of formatting in terms of design etc I'm just gonna save that for now okay so that's the name of that that notice where that is now save that arrangement and see what happens now when we come back to the blog if we now view the blog magically we now have two buttons at the top one takes me to the blog and one takes me to a page called about me and that really now is starting to look like a website almost or a blog and a website and of course we can produce as many pages as we want so you make pages but you also need to add the pages gadget to allow access to them but what you're basically doing here is adding up a menu system now let's look what happens when we add an additional page just to make that dead clear so let's imagine we're going to have another page we're going to go to the pages um, area now and we're going to add a new page so click on new page and this page again you've got to give it a title so I'm going to call this page my latest 
talks for example of course it could be a class it could be a list of students or whatever and I'm just going to imagine here that I'm just putting in some information about my latest talks so just putting that there very quickly just to, to show you what happens going to publish that so click on there just going to publish that and we've now got two pages created and that is my latest talks and about me now let's view the blog and you'll notice again that this has not been added so again we now need to come in go to that pages one and then add this one and say yes we want to add the pages to this particular menu okay so you have to keep doing that I'm afraid now I do think if I remember rightly there is a kind of a default button that I can click on that automatically adds my pages uh, without me having to remember to do it um, also note that you can drag these around and put them in a different order if you want to you're most quite likely to put your, your um, home page first uh, that might be not might not be the case I might have got that wrong that might be me confusing using uh, WordPress and blogger anyway just keep that in mind that you may find yourself adding new pages to your blog and those bl pages not being added to your menu at the top and therefore you just need to physically go in and do those. Now the problem with Blogger is it's just got so many things and it's very difficult for me to know when to stop in terms of what would I consider to be an introductory course to Blogger and if we come back here and now went back to the blog and we looked uh, through this menu you'll see that we've hardly touched anything we've looked at posts we've looked at pages and we've looked a little bit at layout now I'm going to point out a couple of very important settings for you first one I want to point out is this one here if I click on settings here and one thing you may want to do at some point is delete your blog and if you want to do that click on settings and then come down right to the bottom to other and it says here delete blog or export blog import blog and um, just for the, this introductory set of courses I'm just going to click on that this is just going to introduce this one thing and that is that is how you delete your blog you click on that button there and you can delete your blog so it's settings and all the way back down to the bottom and other and you can delete your blog from there now I'm going to point out a couple of other really important settings uh, just before I finish off this introductory course scroll down again go to settings and if you look on the basic ones you've got a couple of really interesting settings here first of all you can add a description and that description will be searched by Google so it's a really good idea to uh, have a nice description of what your blog is about now also you can I'll just leave that for now cancel that you can also make sh your look at your privacy settings and whether or not you want your blog accessible and findable on search engines and particularly if you're working with a class of students you may not want that to happen so you may want to turn those off another thing that you might want to do and this is really important is that you may want to add authors when you have more than one person with permission to work on a blog it's almost becoming like a wiki and you may decide that you for example want to organize your groups uh, classes into uh, students into into teams who create a blog together or the students themselves may want to do that or you may give permission to certain students within the class to contribute to a class blog there are all sorts of possibilities d depending on whether you are producing a blog on your own or whether you're going to produce a blog as a class blog or whether you're going to do student blogs but one thing that you can do is add an author so if I click here and write the name of somebody in what I need to do is to make sure that I add their name and um, you can do this in sort of various ways now you can choose to, from contacts now because your blogger is linked to your Gmail account if I was to click on this button it would bring up the contacts in my Gmail account if I want to inch, add an invitation to an author I'm gonna add this one here and that's me but on another email account and I'm gonna click on invite authors and I'm actually gonna invite this person to join the um, the actual blog and um, you'll see that there's an, an open invitation that's been sent to that particular person so I can send 
an invitation to someone and I'm going to show you what the result would be of that now and the result is an email is sent to me and I can accept the invitation however if I don't have a Gmail account I will need to sign up so that I can therefore contribute to the blog so keep in mind if you're going to have your students working in groups they will need to have a Gmail account if you want them to for example have two or three people all working on a blog together so it's almost like a wiki okay that's everything for this introductory set of videos if you're looking to do any more then please go to teachertrainingvideos.com click on blogs and wikis you should see that there's some new ones going to be here there's going to be an introduction to blogger I think it's going to be blogger and themes advanced blogger and intermediate blogger there's going to be lots of new ones you can also search by just writing in the search engine here at the top of the page and uh, just look out they will be added in the next couple of weeks if they're not on there when you go on now to search then just give it a couple of weeks and you'll see that they will be added uh, hopefully that has got you up and running and using Blogger.